You've probably seen all of those videos where AI gurus teach you how you can build your own crazy automations, but most of them are absolute amateurs. They just learn how to use a couple of tools. Now, the truth is, yes, you can build something very advanced with no code tools, but in some cases, you still might need some code. Now, here's the idea. You've probably all used ChatGPT, Claude, Gemini, Copilot, and other AIs. And you probably notice one common thing between all of them. While it can help you answer your questions, maybe write some code, there is still one major problem with all of those AI systems, and that is they cannot execute actions. So here's what I mean. Imagine you need to write an email. And yes, you can say, here's my context, I'm talking with him and him, and here's a copy-paste message. What should I reply? And yet AI will give you a reply. That's probably pretty decent. But then you have to go again and copy, go to your email, paste, send, and so on. And that is just one example with the emails. Let's say you're crafting a doc. Now change that, then do this, then copy this, then paste that. And now imagine if all of these loops of going back and forth to AI, copying, pasting, explaining, giving it context, wasn't necessary anymore. What if when you ask AI to write an email, it doesn't just actually give you the text, but writes it and sends it. So think of it as a smart virtual assistant that is not there just to give you text, but actually execute actions via the chat terminal. So it'll feel like you're talking with the real employee with the chat, whereas here, read my emails, then send this, then do this, and it'll actually do it. So that is the idea, to build a smart AI assistant that you can talk to through chat that will actually execute actions for you on the background. And you might be thinking, wow, that sounds a bit too good. But here's the MVP that I was able to put out for the video. And I think you might be surprised that it actually works. So let's get into it. So let me give you a quick walkthrough of what I actually wanted to do here. So we'll have our AI agents, which is basically will be one agent that'll be doing our actions. He will have his own knowledge base. So think of it as memory on ChatGPT, but more advanced, maybe it's your Google Drive that is being scanned or your PDFs. So when you talk with the AI, it actually knows context in you or your business particularly. Then we'll have some best LMs on the market. So in this example, we'll probably use GPT model. We can also pre-build our own AIs there, which is called assistance on OpenAI, where you can give it custom prompts, clarify how it should act. And on OpenAI platform for developers, when you're building your own GPT or you're building your own assistant with their API, you can actually call functions. So you can feed it a schema of how functions will look like, what is the name, what is the description of the function, what parameters it is taking. And once you specify all of that, you just specify when this function should be called by AI. And AI will actually determine when to call this function on its own and which params to pass into it. So which is pretty crazy. So knowing that AI can call those functions for us, the even crazier part is that it can call functions in a certain order in this order, we don't even have to define to AI. So for example, if you'll have two functions, one function is to read the emails and second one is to reply to an email. So if we say, hey, I need you to reply to an email, it'll know that first, in order to reply to an email, it needs to trigger a function that reads emails and then to trigger a function that can actually reply to emails. So we don't have to even specify that. So that's pretty neat. Now that we know that we have smart functions, so here's what we're gonna do. Instead of connecting Google, Notion, email service, and I don't even know what, why would we invent the bicycle when we can literally pre-use some no-code platforms for this? So, and as mentioned, there are plenty. So the thing that we need to do here is just figure out how to connect them together, how to make a reusable template so our users will be able to just copy and make template. In our platform, we'll be communicating with their webhook that they'll set up in like two minutes. And our AI assistants via function call will be knowing what to trigger on those no-code platforms. So as you guessed it, yes, we'll use make.com for this. We'll build our own no-code template there. That'll be smart, I guess. But in reality, it'll be just a simple rotor that'll be listening for function calls and we'll know which pass to trigger. So I'll show that in a second. And with all that, it'll be able to execute our smart action. So with that said, here's a quick preview that I've built. So here I have this basic website that runs on localhost it looks similar to all of those AI platforms where you have the chat, you have some history, you have quick actions, account, and so on. So since I'm using the dev version here, so I can monitor the console, I'm using Next.js as my tech stack here. It'll be slower than if it was the production, but here's how it works. So let's say you want to start a general conversation as you would normally do. Hello, I want to make a Google doc about why cats are good animals. 
So let's send it and we'll see what AI will reply to us. So as you see, the AI replied to us here saying, hey, creating a Google Doc is a good idea. I can help you. Just give me some details. So we can say, I'll leave it up to you. Just make a doc. So what happens in the background is that AI reads the message. It analyzes which function to trigger, and then it actually executes this action. And how it works, we'll show you in a second. So as you see, it just replied, hey, I've created the document. And as mentioned, it has access to my Google Drive. So it generated me a link. So let's click and preview what it did. And as you see, it created a full document. Well, I mean, there's some markdown issues, but there it is, a document that we asked it to do. And I can also say, hey, can you add to the document? Dogs are also cool. We can open our console. This is the reason why it's slow and see what is happening in the background. It is calling our functions. It's passing the variables there. And if we go back, it already prints the response for us. So if we go back to our doc, we see that this is our doc and see, it added what we asked it to do. With this, you can basically manage your Google Docs, Notion and other things. So here's the example. Let's say I have the social media planner with three items inside. And one of them is the product launch. So let's go back to our AI and see if it knows anything about it. Do you know if I've added product launch to my Notion list? Let's see what it does. So if we open our console, we can see that it triggered a function called search Notion pages, contains product launch, it is doing the search, it analyzes the data or waits for make.com to respond to our request. So it looks like something happened there. So there's our error. So this could happen too, since this is MVP, but let's start from scratch. So we can also ask it to, as mentioned, to do some research in Notion. Okay, and here's our item on Notion. Search it for me. Let's see if it'll be able to execute it for us. And here's the response. Yes, you have a product launch page in Notion. Here's the link. So let's open it. And as you see, it is that link. So it works. We can ask it to change something to it. So when I talk with the chat, it actually knows the context. So for example, now when I'll refer it there, it'll know what I'm talking about. So can you add to this page? Figure it out, came back, it said, sure. And as you see, it's already there. Add a joke there as well. It says it added the joke, let's see. Why did the AI developer go broke? Because he wanted to make a virtual version. Not bad. But there you have it. Basically, we can add things to Notion, to Google. We can search for stuff. We can say, hey, now list my Google Docs. Maybe something that has test in it. I've given it access to a certain folder. And here it is. Now I can also ask it to send emails. So, for example, Remember we created our own doc. What was it? The doc I think was why cats are good animals. So can you summarize the why cats are good animals and send the summary to this email? So I'll use my personal email here. I'll hit send. So if I go to my personal email, I'll see that there's one more email and there we have it. We have an email sent for us. So it can read my emails, it can send my emails, it can summarize my stuff, it can add things, it can look for things, it can work both in Google, Notion, and actually pretty much every single platform that can be connected with Make, which is thousands of platforms. Think Airtable, think Instagram, think Facebook, Google Sheets, and much more. And it all happens with the basic chat interface as you talk with like your employee, hey, do this for me, what do you think about this, come up with this, which is kind of crazy. So as I said, this is just an MVP and I'm not going to go through every single thing that I can do, but here is some actions that I already pre-built here. So we can create a Google Doc, save a lead to spreadsheets and an email, find a Notion page, get a Notion database item. So database items are those table-like or Kanban-like things. Find a Notion database, find an item, find an email. So basically this is enough for me to operate and being able to collaborate between all of those things. So now you're wondering, okay, that's pretty cool. So you can build a chat interface that you can talk to and it'll execute actions for you. That's pretty futuristic. And even ChatGPT and Claude and all of those deep seek, I don't know, they cannot do it. But so then you must be thinking, okay, Arthur, but how do you do it? Well, as I said, I'm not one of those amateurs on YouTube. <laughs> 
I actually know how to code. And in this video, I'm not gonna tell you, oh, you connect this bubble, then pass this variable, and there it works. No, you can find this stuff everywhere. So I think this thing is what actually you need. And I'm not gonna go through every single line of code. I'm not gonna make this video one hour long where I go really in depth on how it works, how I made it. But what I can do is to give you a general idea of how it works. So maybe you can try to build something similar or get inspired. So I said in here, this is the general idea of how it works. We will open our platform where I'll show you the functions that I was talking about. So here on OpenAI, you can basically create your own assistant, give it a prompt of how to act. You can choose which model to use. You can even add your file search or vector database, basically pre-train it on your PDFs or your style of talking to users or maybe certain restrictions or just extra information that they cannot get from regular ChatGPT. So this is what's interesting. This is the functions that I have. They actually correspond to things in the menu here where I was showing you these quick actions. As I said, it's pretty easy. So you click add a function and here you can see they have this template so for example, getting a stock price or weather, or in my case, adding a lead or executing this action and then executing that action. So in this schema, I'll give you a quick walkthrough. So name is the name of the function that will be called in your code. So let's say you have Python code or JavaScript code. And so you must have a function with the exact same name as you would pass here. So for example, if you have a function called get stock price with the underscores, then you can add it here. Description, this is the very important part. So description is something that you provide to AI to understand when to trigger this function. So for example, if you say get stock price, and in this example, get the current stock price, or call this when a user asks to get the current stock price. So this is how AI determines on when to call which function and in which order. So the better description you give it, the more advanced and sequential your code could be. Parameters. So the function could require some things like stock symbol, or if you're getting weather, maybe that's a city. So here you define the name of the properties that will go inside of the get stock price when it's called as a function. In this example, we have symbol. Additional properties is false or true. So basically this is for a strict mode, like you can add strict true, and then AI will have to follow the structure, like no extra properties, only what I define which I recommend. Required fields is basically uh, which properties are required, but AI has to pass them every single time that they call this function. And that is it. They actually even added this generate with AI so you can describe what your function is about, when to call it, which properties it takes, and it should generate it for you. So here's example one of my functions. So let's say list Google Docs. So as you see, it's pretty straightforward name list Google Docs, ability to list user Google Documents, call to search for Google Documents. So as mentioned, I'm using Next.js with React inside. And the reason that I like Next.js is that you can basically build backend API and frontend React in the same code base, which is pretty cool. And basically I've created a constant where I list all of my actions. So this will be the exact function names that I've added to my agent. And the reason I have this constant so later I can map them. So I have this util called make API, where basically I take the params, I take the action type, I take the contains, and I take the details. So this is extra stuff that I might need in my make automations. Then I'm making the API call through my backend, so I avoid course and potentially privacy issues. Now what I'm calling on make is a webhook, and the webhook it is a link that triggers your scenarios, basically. So once I have my scenario link, I just paste it in my code, my API will know which function to call, and this is passed as part of the param to the webhook, so it's a content, details, and the action type, and then make does all of the magic on the background. So it is time that I show what is inside make as well. So this is a quick overview of what I have so far. This is not perfect, this is just MVP, but I think it's good enough to give you a walkthrough. So we have a webhook that is being triggered from my code. Then we have a tool. I like to store variables. So this is the properties that I take. I also like to test the stuff with Postman at first. And then I have this rotor, basically, that just has all of those bubbles. And inside of the bubble connections, I just click on this filter. And here I just add a label like email action or send email. And then I check from my properties in API request, action type, I'm checking if it is the send email. So basically, I'm checking 
actions match. So if action is an email, action types an email, then trigger this bubble. You know, email, send email, respond to API. So all of our bubbles have to finish with the webhook response. So that way our AI knows what was the execution. And so simply, if I wanted to teach my AI a new action, I just click new road, create my own chain of actions, uh, create a filter here, like what is the action type? Just come up with the new action type, put it into my code, to the list of constants, that this new action, describe it here. Then I go to the playground, click add a function, put name, put a description when to call this function, and voila. Now when I'll be talking with my AI assistant, it will now trigger the function. The function in my code doesn't exist, but it will trigger the make function. Make will pass the function name. When make passes the function name through webhook, we have this rotor that knows which uh, flow to trigger based on the action name, and it executes the action first. So that is the general idea. It's pretty straightforward, it's pretty simple. We can use init n instead, we can simply switch from make, but this is the beauty of it, and this is why I like it. It allows me to move pretty fast with my software. It allows to create the security aspect where I don't get to store any credentials or passwords because we handle everything for him. So that is the idea. Ideally, of course, we have access to the API of Make, so it is easier if we change anything in our template so we don't have to tell them, hey, import the new template, we just do it automatically. But that is the concept. As you see, it works. I showed you the MVP. We can read emails, we can send emails, we can read docs, we can uh, add to docs, we can edit docs, we can look for things in Notion, we can control our own CRMs. And basically here, your imagination is the limit. And obviously, this is just an MVP, and I can build something much more useful with this, like uh, saying, hey, can you create this Jira ticket for me? Or can you update this item in CRM for me? Or this guy from this CRM, who I've talked on this day, hey, how about you send him a follow-up email and update his status in CRM? And it'll just do it. And it'll do it much faster than a real human. Even with the slow developer version preview, it's still much faster than human. So now it looks like the actual AI agent that you don't have to worry about setting up all those main connections. You don't have to worry about having the API credentials for any API. You just create an account, you just log in with me, and it just works. So the roadmap for this project is huge. If you'd like for me to make a more in-depth video on this or teach you something more similar, or you're just amazed by what I was able to do here, let me know in the comments and maybe we can talk or maybe I can consider making another video. So with that said, I wanna th thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Because here I talk about this cool AI automations, just general AI news, online entrepreneurship, coding tutorials, and, and not just that. So I hope I'll see you in the next one.